Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's session, we will look at AWS S3 bucket policies. Now, AWS S3 is one of the very widely used uh, storage service that you have in AWS and it provides us with various mechanisms that uh, we can use to uh, control the access to the data that we store within these S3 buckets. And out of those mechanisms, one option we have is our bucket policies. So in this particular session, we will be looking at your bucket policies. Uh, in the next session, we will talk about your ACLs, which is another mechanism that can be used to uh, control the access to your uh, data that you store within your S3 bucket. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So your uh, S3 bucket policies, these are simply your JSON based configurations that we can create. So it's like your JSON policy that we can create. And then we can use this to control your access permissions both at your bucket level as well as your object level. So basically any data that you store within the S3 bucket, we refer to them as objects. So using this JSON based policies, uh, we can control as to who can access your buckets, who can access the data inside that uh, bucket. So uh, these S3 bucket policies, they allow us to define very fine grain control. All right, so you can um, you know control at a very fine grain level. So you can control who can access your buckets as well as your objects. So it can be your IAM users, your IAM roles, other AWS accounts, or you can also give public access to the uh, bucket. Then uh, you can control what actions the entity can uh, perform. So you know like you want to allow read access, you want to allow write access, or you want to allow delete access, you can control that as well. And you can also control under which condition the access is uh, granted. So it could be like uh, the access can be granted only from a specific range, like uh, a user can access your S3 bucket only from a particular IP range, like let's say uh, within a VPC or from your corporate network or from specific AWS services, like only from the EC2 service or from the Lambda service, we can define that condition as well. So under this, we will be defining all of these in a JSON policy and you can customize it the way you want it. That way you can have more control over your S3 bucket as well as the objects that you have in your uh, bucket. So it's, it's mainly like a, a firewall a protection for your buckets that you can control and uh, you can give very um, uh, least privilege access to your users as to uh, you know if you have if you are maintaining sensitive data then you can make use of this now the next we are going to talk about the structure of your s3 bucket policy so when we talk about your s3 bucket policy like i said it's your json policy and it contains some key components that you will need to understand so the first component we have is the version now this is where we define the version of the policy language like for example, here I have a example a JSON policy. Now this is where we define the version. So this is the policy language and mostly this will be default 2012-17. Then we have your statement. Now this is basically your block and this contains all of your permission rules. So here this statement, so it's basically a block that we define. Now within this statement, we will have your effect, which is generally allow or deny so basically uh what is the rule you're creating you want to allow the access or you want to deny the access like here in this case effect is allowed that means i'm giving the access I'm, I'm allowing the access then you have the principal so principal is basically who gets the access which entity this rule applies to like you want to uh, give access to an im user or to an im role or to other aws account that can be defined within your principal so here i've given star that means this is basically a wild card and uh, uh, anyone, so it's basically open to all. So anyone um, gets the access. Then you have the action. This is where you will be defining what action the entity can uh, take. Like you want to uh, allow a get object or create a, a bucket or delete the bucket, delete the object, uh, read, write all those permissions, the action. So in this case, I'm giving access to the S3 bucket and we are giving a get object access. And then finally, we will have your resource. Now, this is where you will define the bucket, which bucket this rule applies to or which object this rule applies to. So in this case, um, so we will have a bucket with this name and uh, this rule, the whatever the JSON policy we are creating, this policy applies to this bucket to all the objects inside that bucket. 
and then you can also have your conditions which is optional so in this case if you say i don't have the condition but i'll be showing you there are other examples where i'll show you um so you can you can use these conditions to add more constraints like you want to allow the access from a specific ip range or from a specific uh, service you can make use of that so here this is an example of your json policy and this is what you will be defining in your um, um, uh, s3 buckets as to what permissions you want to allow so let's see some um, examples of your bucket policy so here uh, this is my example bucket that I've created. You can go ahead and create a bucket to get started with this. Now, once you have your bucket, you can go inside this bucket and you can go to this permissions over here. And this is where you will see your bucket policy. Now, there's one more setting here, which we haven't discussed about, which is your block public access. Now, block public access. So by default, uh, you won't be able to make your objects public, meaning whatever the objects you will store in your s3 buckets are private you won't be able to access them over the internet but if you want to access them over the internet then you will need to remove this uh, block public access so to do that you can edit this and you'll have to remove that you can also have more control over here but we are giving full access so you know we are basically removing all the block so i want to make the bucket public and then we will save these changes and we will confirm this and that will now allow us to uh, make our bucket public. Now, this is where we define our JSON policy. So we'll go to edit and here is where you will be defining this uh, JSON policy or bucket policy. So we will copy that and I will paste that over here. And like I said, this is your JSON document and we will save these changes and this um okay so looks like there's an error so policy has invalid resource um okay so my bucket name if you see this bucket i don't have it so i'm gonna change it to this bucket over here so let's go ahead and change that and let's save this and done so now my uh bucket policy has been applied and now so basically this one you know it's it's like i'm giving access to anyone and anyone can do a get object in my s3 bucket so if you have some data like in let's say in this case this particular data anyone can do a get call on this object and they can read this but they can download this data as well that's one example uh, the next example so i have a few policies over here i'll be sharing the link to this in the description section you can refer it from there uh, now let's say the other example we have is you want to allow access to specific users so here is the json policy for that so again we have the version we have the statement we are allowing and now coming to the principal so if here you can see instead of going with asterisk which is your uh, wild card now we are going with specific users so these are a couple of im users that um, you can have in your account like in this case and uh, we are just taking the arn of these users and we are adding it to the json policy so basically what i'm telling here is i want to give access to user one and user two and this is the action that I want to allow. So uh, put object that is write access, read access, uh, get the data from the bucket and then which bucket this rule applies to. So this is at the bucket level as well as the objects, right? So I'm giving access to the bucket. I'm also giving access to the objects inside that bucket. So I can take this policy can go here and uh, I mean, you can have a, um, um, comma over here and you can define multiple policies if you want uh, but this is the final policy what it looks like so in our case the user would be so this is one of the user we have and we will add that sorry we will add that over here and then we'll have one more user which is user two. so this is user two and then your bucket so this is the bucket we have so we will change that and we will save this now this policy will allow user one and user two to access my bucket as well as the uh, objects inside this bucket so this is the actions that they can take so these users they can log in from the im user console and they can access this bucket and they can take these actions the next example we have is uh, cross account access now let's say if you want to give access to other aws account this will be the policy so again principal if you see here 
uh, you will be adding the ARN of the destination account, the other AWS account. So here I've just given a, a dummy name, but ideally this will be the account ID. Then what action you want to allow and then the bucket. Okay, so for the sake of example, I'll take this, we'll edit this again and um, the account ID in my case, I'll, I'll just give my account ID just for the sake of example, but I did this will be the actual account ID and then the um, bucket name. And now we are giving the access to this particular AWS account. We are giving it access to get the objects in this bucket for all the objects. So basically, you know, uh, any the root user from this account will be able to get the object from this particular bucket. The last example I have is making use of um, conditions. So now let's say I want to allow the access only from a particular IP address. So this is where we can make use of your conditions. So again, we are giving access, we are giving the access to anyone and the action we are giving is to get object the uh, bucket name so in my case this will be the bucket name and then your condition so i want to allow the condition for an ip address and also source ip so here is the range so this is complaining about an error private ip address so let's say we'll give some other address so let's say i want to allow this from 49.25.12.30 just some example but you can give any ip address you want and we will save this now what this basically means is the traffic coming from this ip address can only get the object in my s3 bucket so this is an example of your condition uh, for ip address but the condition can be for um, um, uh, anything you can imagine you know like let's say you want to allow the access only from particular uh, ec2 like aws services like EC2 instances or uh, Lambda or RDS, then we can make use of your conditions of that as well. So this is basically how we can make use of your bucket policies to uh, control the access, uh, um, control who can access your data, what actions they can take, when the, the actions can be taken, all those things can be controlled by making use of your bucket policy. So bucket policies is one of the mechanism that we have that we can use to control the access to your S3 buckets as well as the objects inside the S3 bucket. Now, the last thing I have for today is the best practices for your S3 bucket policies. So one, you will need to follow least privilege principles. So only grant the necessary permissions. So try to give the least privileges as much as possible. Don't give very open permissions, have very restricted permissions then make use of bucket policies with IAM policies. So IAM policies is another way that can be used to control the access. So we can make use of both your IAM policies and bucket policies to have a better control over your S3 bucket and the objects. Then disable block public access. So you can use this setting unless you want to give public access. Always make sure your block public access is enabled, right? So um, if you don't want to give uh, public access then disable it and if you want to give public access then uh, you can you can just uh, uh, remove this and people will start having access to your bucket but again uh, it's not really recommended but based on a use case if you want to disable it you can disable it and then the last we have is your test your policies thoroughly so whatever the policies you are creating uh, make sure you are validating them so you can make use of tools like uh, I am access analyzer to access your policies that you are uh, creating. So here you should have the access analyzer that can be used to validate your uh, bucket policies to make sure it is giving the intended access, right? Whatever the access that you want to give, you are giving only those access and nothing else. You can validate all those things by making use of your access analyzer. So that's about your bucket policies. So again, S3 provides you um, various mechanisms out of which s3 bucket policies is one of those and these are simply your json policies that you create and we can use this to control your permissions both at the bucket level as well as your object level that's all i have for this session thank you once again before you leave please don't forget to hit that subscribe button please give it a thumbs up and uh, please leave your feedback in the comment section thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video